From verbal spats between players and officials gone rogue, to a player smashing his own head open in a fit of rage, some of these moments from tennis history disrespected the game like no other. I thought this was a classy sport. But then, there was nothing classy about Nick Kyrgios sledging his opponent's girl. Something about Nick Kyrgios attracting negative attention like a moth to a flame. He's probably engaged in every kind of improper behavior there is, and a 100-page book can be published about his disrespectful incidents. Like yelling at the referees, tanking, making fun of opponents, smashing rackets, and verbally insulting supporters. But this was a new low. Things got ugly after the Australian seemed to sledge Stan Wawrinka, the world number 5, during a Rogers Cup match in 2015. Actually, it was more about Wawrinka's girlfriend, Donna Vekic. Kyrgios got too harsh and personal, and it was captured on the court mic. During the game, he told the Swiss two-time Grand Slam champion, Kakanakis banged your girlfriend. Sorry to break the news to you, man. That was in reference to his fellow Australian and Davis Cup teammate, Tanasi Kakanakis. Kirio stated later that he'd been pushed into making the comment during what was a heated match. Warinka demanded that the ATP punish him severely, and they did. Despite Kyrgios's post-match apology for his actions, in which he claimed that his remarks were uttered in the heat of the moment, the officials still fined him a whopping $100,000. You'd imagine he'd think twice about running his mouth after this, huh? Now, they say you either die a legend or live long enough to lose all that you'd worked for because of your incredibly vile comments, which is exactly what happened with Ilya Nastase. They don't call him nasty for nothing. The former world number one stirred some ugly controversy. First, he cursed at British tennis players Johanna Kanta and Anne Kiathavong during the Fed Cup in 2017. Then, in a conversation with Simona Halep, he also said offensive things about Serena Williams' unborn child. A journalist overheard Nastase refer to Williams' unborn child as chocolate with milk. These aren't your 1970s heydays, my guy. You can't get away with comments like that. His defense? He claimed the remark was a spontaneous response after finding out the player was expecting. Yes, because everyone goes around being spontaneously racist, huh? Oh well, he was slapped with an 8-month suspension and a $20,000 fine by the International Tennis Federation. Also, he was denied permission to attend future Wimbledon and French Open competitions by their respective organizations. In the end, he was also booted from the Romania vs Great Britain game. Anyway, imagine creating history, but for all the wrong reasons. Like the next guy who's known as the first tennis player to get a lifetime ban. Yep, Daniel Kollerer of Austria was the first tennis player to get a lifetime ban for trying to rig matches. Former Davis Cup player, who at one point held the number 55 spot in the world rankings, was found guilty of three offenses related to the sport's anti-corruption policies, including attempting to change the outcome of an event. Apparently, the offenses took place from October 2009 until July 2010. An inquiry was started by the Tennis Integrity Unit, an anti-corruption organization which was on behalf of the International Tennis Federation, the ATP, and the WTA circuits. Crazy Danny received a $100,000 fine as well, but rejected the accusations and is hell-bent on proving his innocence. He believes that the ATP sacrificed him to scare other players, and that the organization would never take such strict measures against greats like Nadal or Novak. The ex-players believe that there was no solid proof of him match-fixing and that the band ruined his life. Yikes! During his time as a professional tennis player, Daniel had a reputation as a shady guy who was known for winding up rivals. He'd already been suspended twice in his career for acting inappropriately on the court. Things also got ugly between him and Stefan Kobach in 2010. They were at each other's throats, literally. The incident was caught on camera because Cholera had allegedly started it and insulted Kobach after knocking his racket out of his hands. Now for one of the most disrespectful spats between a player and a chair umpire. Yep, I'm talking about the time Serena lost her cool. On the crucial point of Serena Williams' loss to Samantha Stoser in the 2011 US Open final, a rule that is rarely used went against her. Serving at 30-40 in the opening game of the second set, Williams appeared to win the point with a strong forehand that went wide to Stoser's backhand side. Soon after hitting the ball, Williams screamed, Come on! Stoser had barely touched the ball with a racket in an attempt to return it. 
However, chair umpire Eva Azdaraki determined that Williams had broken the hindering rule. How? Apparently, by shouting before Stoser had a chance to return the shot, despite the scoreboard flashing 40-40. The hindrance rule is challenging to properly enforce because many of the female players yell and grunt before every shot. The second game was about to start when the crowd began to boo and whistle their disapproval of the call. No, I'd be mad too. Turns out, the chair umpire and Serena had some old beef too, which was brought in along with the slew of digs the player took at her. The result? Williams received a $2,000 fine. But this isn't nearly as bad as the trouble she got in in 2009. The US Open semifinal match between Serena Williams and Kim Clijsters featured an odd end. It included a typical Williams outburst directed at a lineswoman and a penalty point that earned Clijsters the victory. Williams was down 6-5, 15-30 in the second set on her own serve after dropping the first set 6-4. A lineswoman called a foot fault on the second serve. This probably would have been okay on a normal day, but you see, Williams had previously been issued a code violation warning for smashing her racket, so Clijsters was given a penalty point for this second transgression and the game was over as a result. Plus, Williams was ultimately punished for her violation with an $82,500 fine and probation. Oh boy! Now, I'm going to talk about a particular Serb who doesn't believe in vaccines. You know it, I'm referring to the Adria Tor fiasco. Okay, it's one thing to be an anti-vaxxer, and another to be roaming around carelessly in the middle of a deadly pandemic. ATP Tour was suspended owing to the coronavirus outbreak, but Djokovic wouldn't take that. He started his Adria Tour and organized a number of competitions. Without any regard for social distancing, the players could be seen hanging out, hugging, and having a good time. Soon enough, four athletes tested positive for the virus as a result, including Djokovic, Grigor Dimitrov, and Borna Cioric but that didn't faze him. In fact, the Serb reacted angrily to his detractors, accusing them of conducting a witch hunt against him. I'd say more, but he'd probably smash a racket in anger. Speaking of smashing rackets, wait till you hear this incident involving Mikhail Yuzhny and Mikhail Yuzhny himself. At the 2008 Sony Ericsson Open in Miami, the match was knotted at one set apiece. Nicolas Almagro needed to win by holding serve to defeat Mikhail Yuzhny. Yuzhny believed he was in a strong position after working his way to a breakpoint that could have ended the match. A protracted and frantic rally followed, but it came to an end when Yuzhny made a blunder and put the ball in the net. His response was shocking. At this point, most players who feel the urge to vent their rage shatter their racket on the court. Not him, no. He took it out on himself. Yep, rammed the racket in his head. Yuzhny's head was covered with blood, so the referee called a medical timeout and the game was postponed. That's disrespectful on so many levels, but mostly to himself. You know what's crazier? He came back and won. I'm guessing the many blows to his head fixed something in there, or just traumatized his rival. Had him thinking, nah, I don't need it that bad, you can have the win. Well, there you have it. That's all for some of the most disrespectful moments in tennis history.